queen of the stitch, my girl Dane the Dane. Hello there my crafty knitters, welcome back to the Knitted Oaks channel. Today I have a special request video for you all today. Today I'm going to show you a three by a three step plan on how to move what you design from your graph paper to an actual knitted project. You like? <laughs> Okay, so here we are back at our graph paper. This is step one of um, how we're going to do this pattern. So this may look a little familiar to you if you watched my first video on how to um, create your own pattern for knitting or crocheting. If not, link will be in the description box. Okay, so here I'm doing a smaller um, width. I just want 18 um, stitches. Um, the last two and the first two are going to be the border, as you can see it going around here. I realized that it's best to have a border with the with the herringbone stitch. This is my little icon for the herringbone stitch, because um, if you look at my how to knit the herringbone stitch, you'll see that the first row that you knit, it kind of the stitches slant, and when you purl on the opposite side, it comes like this on the other side. So that's just why I chose that icon. But again. You can choose any icon you'd like. Um, for the purposes of this video, I'm going to go ahead and insert the numbers here. Uh, this is row one. This would be row three. And I'm going to continue to just put the numbers in um, every other box because the other, the other box would represent the second, the fourth, and the sixth row, which will be numbered on the opposite side. So again, when you knit, you knit from right to left. Okay, so we're back. Um, I've come to a different lighting, different background, because um, I think this lighting is a little bit better for you guys. I finished my, um, my chart, as you can see here, and I wanted to let you know that I changed it up from the original um, a little bit. Originally, as you can see, I only had two rows that were knit, because my little bubbles here mean that I'm going to knit this whole thing. So the bubble means knit. Um, I changed it because upon doing a swatch, and I apologize for the dark yarn, but I'm actually using this color yarn and this yarn actually. I think it's Charisma by Loops and Threads, but don't quote me on that because I don't know where the packaging is right now. But I did a swatch. Oh, beautiful. Uh, in the lighting, I mean, I'm so, <laughs> I'm not like praising my own swatch here, it's just a swatch. But upon doing the swatch, I realized that four rows as opposed to two looks way more better. Looks much, much better. Um, and I did a little sample here of the herringbone stitch. That's why it's important to swatch, ladies and gentlemen. So in here is my uh, herringbone stitch, and here's what it looks like. I will post a link to how to do the herringbone stitch for you all in the description box. Here's what the back of the swatch looks like. Okay, not really important because the star of the show is the herringbone stitch, which is unfortunately only a one-sided pattern. Okay, so that's why it's important to switch folks because, to swatch, sorry. It's important to swatch because then you can see ahead of time what you want to change up if you want to change anything before you go into your project okay so okay so we're back and here is my finished product okay um, it's a mini scarf not quite a cow not quite a scarf just right in between something to stop at the nape of your neck right under the collarbone and uh, tuck neatly and flatly underneath your jacket so it won't be bulky like the typical scarf. Okay, so um, I'm going to bring back in our step one and step two props. Okay, so we have here the chart. Then you have the swatch to let us know that the chart was okay. And then we went into the actual product. Okay. So it's the same thing as the swatch here depicted. Of course, I'd knit 
and um, closed with four rows as you see here that's our label and it oaks and then um, we have in here the herringbone stitch okay so that's all there really is to it there'll be pictures posted on our website um, or Facebook maybe maybe both um, but I hope you enjoyed this video um, from beginning to end on how to work your charts okay so thank you so much for watching and I will see you in our next video okay guys so there you have it the finished product I hope that you all enjoyed this video I hope that it's helpful to some of you I did find the packaging for this and it is Charisma's yarn by Loops and Threads and the color red um, and I chose red because that's just the festivities of the season and everything just makes me draw to darker palettes so I really do love this red I really want to say also about this yarn that it allowed me to knit tightly with the herringbone stitch in my how to knit a hair in how to knit the herringbone stitch video I you know stated my trouble with doing the herringbone stitch because it was difficult to knit tightly with certain yarns and I was using Vanna's Choice I believe for that swatch in that video I used Charisma and it was like heaven I got to knit tightly I got a nice neat look and finish to my product and there's no gaps or holes in it um, so you know it's really what your preference is and this is mine as you all know I love to knit tightly because I like my work to be neat so Thank you all so much for watching. Thank you for your many requests. I am working on them. They're taking some time, um, but they are coming. And um, I hope that you enjoy this. I hope that you try out the three steps. Um, and let me know if you do. Post a video response if you do a whole different pattern and She'll you want to show me how you got it from beginning to end. I really, really love to see it. Um, thank you so much again for watching and I will see you in the next video. Remember, knitting is sexy. Bye!